How are we doing EFD? And today I've got our top 10 unknown heroes who created modern football. 10. Monchi Finally leaving his post at Sevilla after 17 years as sporting director, Monchi took the Nervianenses from the Segunda Liga to three consecutive Europa League trophies in just over a decade. Born Ramon Rodriguez Vadeco, the Spaniard had played for Sevilla as a keeper, but ended up defining the club from the back office, not the field. The club had just four major trophies when Monchi took on the role, a number which more than tripled under his leadership. Dani Alves arrived for 200,000 euros as a 19 year old, Ivan Rakitic cost just 2.5 million euros, and the club made nearly half a billion euros in sales, picking up prospects for pennies and selling them on as ready made superstars. Bunsen Burner, nice little earner. Monchi's departure ends a 29 year association between man and club, and will be mourned in Andalusia for years to come. Since the turn of the millennium, Sevilla have defied gravity, and Monchi has been the man making them fly. 9. Jan Tian In 1993, executives at gaming company EA were worried about the new football game they were working on. MLS hadn't been founded yet, and football was yet to take off in North America. The game had a tiny budget of just $30,000 a month, and lead developer Jan Tian was sweating on getting it ready to go on sale at Christmas. Despite the workload putting him in hospital for exhaustion, Tian managed what had previously been considered impossible. Getting players to take up realistic positions in the game rather than simply running around the pitch after the ball. Suddenly it looked like real football and FIFA International Soccer was a commercial and critical success, selling half a million copies in just four weeks, double its target. Nearly a quarter of a century and 25 versions of the game later, each new FIFA cost more than $350 million to develop, and the series has sold over 100 million copies worldwide. More importantly, FIFA has helped grow football in Asia and North America, with a 2014 poll revealing that 34% of Americans became fans of the sport after playing the game first. So, when Cristiano Ronaldo buys an island or a new car, he has Jan Tian to thank. 8. Pini Zahavi Depending on your point of view, Pini Zahavi could be a hero or a villain, but he is undoubtedly one of modern football's most influential dealmakers. The Israeli football agent has been in the game for a long time and oversaw his first transfer in 1979 when he brokered a £200,000 deal for Avi Cohen to move from Maccabi Haifa to Liverpool. During the 1980s and 90s, he strengthened his relationship with English football by bringing players such as Eyal Berkovich to West Ham and making friends with the likes of Kenny Dalglish and Sir Alex Ferguson. In 2002, his friendship with Ferguson helped set up Rio Ferdinand's £30 million move to Old Trafford, a British transfer record at the time. But his biggest piece of business came a year later, as a certain Roman Abramovich strolled into town. Zahavi played a key role in the Russian billionaire's takeover of Chelsea, and reportedly earned £5 million from his involvement with the club's £111 million transfer spree that summer as he helped to usher in a new era of crazy spending in European football. 7. Christian Gutler We don't think of football as the ideal arena for technology to flourish, but Christian Gutler proved that wrong when he invented a training machine known as the Footballnaut. A player stands in a circle inside a room whose walls are made up of a grid of 72 windows. A ball is fired at the player from one of 8 angles, a window lights up and he has to control and then play a pass through a lit gap in one smooth movement. The machine has become popular with Bundesliga clubs, and most famously Borussia Dortmund, who subjected their young team to gruelling hours practising their touch and release in the chamber. The result was two consecutive titles in 2011 and 2012, and a generation of technically gifted footballers who could gather the ball under pressure. Mario Goetzen became obsessed by the drill, and when he came on as a substitute in the 2014 World Cup final, those days of training paid off. Andre Schürrler clipped a ball into the little playmaker, who controlled it with his chest and volleyed it into the far corner. Germany won the World Cup. Gutler had quietly changed football history. 6. Zidanec Zeman Born in the former Czechoslovakia, Zidanec Zeman made his name in Italy. The coach took Foggia from the third tier to Serie A in two seasons, playing an attractive attacking 4-3-3, and kept them on the brink of UEFA Cup qualification, despite a lack of top-end talent. In a league of caution and catenaccio, Zeman was a wild man, trialling insane ideas he had seen in handball, like having eight men run into the opposition penalty area from kickoff in an attempt to score early. But his tactical inventiveness was arguably less influential than his willingness to say the unsayable. 
Like when he accused Juventus of doping players like Gianluca Vialli and Alessandro Del Piero. Zeman turned out to be right, as Juve club doctor Ricardo Agricola was sent to prison for giving players drugs between 1994 and 1998. Unfortunately, like most visionaries, Zeman was a pain in the ass and never had a lengthy term with the top side. Though in Serie B with Pescara, he brought through young talents like Lorenzo Insigne and Marco Verratti. 5. Charles Reap Often called the father of stats in football, Charles Reap was a great champion of numbers and a great misinterpreter of them. The Englishman began collecting data in the 1940s, noting how many passes were in each move, where the passes came from and whether a goal was scored. Reap discovered that around 80% of goals came from moves of three passes or fewer, and so championed the long ball game to get possession upfield quickly. This soon became the defining tactic of the English game, with England manager Graham Taylor using Reap's methods even in the 1990s. Recently, writer Jonathan Wilson has pointed out that more than 90% of moves in the 1940s contained three passes or fewer, making it inevitable that most goals would be scored from such moves. It turned out that for decades, the English game had relied on a style which was not only ugly, but also ineffective. Who would have guessed? 4. Ralph Rangnick RB Leipzig sporting director Ralph Rangnick had an unusual path at the top. The German came through Stuttgart's academy but had a poor playing career, appearing for non-league teams while studying astrophysics in the UK. Rangnick became a manager, and his thoughtful approach to the game earned him the nickname the German Wenger. His teams pressed high and worked together to win back possession, and when German football sought to rebuild itself after exiting Euro 2000 without a win, Rangnick led the way, refusing to sign players over 24 and focusing on transitions, attacking and athleticism. The coach also put emphasis on character, Ragnar allowed young players to only have small, modest cars, whilst established players get larger ones, and veterans could drive whatever they wanted. He also outlawed unusual haircuts, and that focus on the team over the individual gave Germany a new identity, one developed by Klopp, Tuchel, and now Nagelsmann. 3. Marcelo Bielsa Marcelo Bielsa virtually created the modern coach. George Sampoli built on Bielsa's time in charge of Chile, adopting the high-energy, high-risk style. Pochettino, who had played under Bielsa for Newell's Old Boys, Espanyol and Argentina, along with Diego Simeone, became a disciple. Pep Guardiola called Bielsa a genius. El Loca, however, has always been a maverick. The Argentine coach was born into a family of lawyers and politicians, but decided to pursue a career in football, recording thousands of matches, and when he coached the university football team, watching 3,000 players before selecting a squad of 20. A middling playing career gave no indication of the revolutionary mindset Bielsa would bring to management. He apparently turned up for an interview at Vélez Sarsfield in 1997, armed with 51 videotapes detailing his plans. He got the job and went on to spread his systems of tireless running, pressing and switching position across the football world. And though the insane demands of his systems and his famously obsessive personality made him a chairman's nightmare, every goal scored from high pressing owes a little something to Marcelo Bielsa. 1 and 2. David Dean and Greg Dyke Even if you prefer La Liga or the Bundesliga, you can't deny that the Premier League is the world's most marketable competition, and its creation can be attributed to two men. Greg Dyke was the managing director of an English TV network in the early 90s, and was convinced that a league with only the country's top teams would attract huge global audiences. He proposed the idea to five of England's biggest clubs, Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool, Tottenham and Everton, and promised them that the glamorous new league would bring them more money and new fans. But the venture needed the support of the FA, and David Dean, Arsenal's vice chairman, negotiated to get them on side. The Prem was born in 1992, with Sky paying £304 million for the rights to broadcast the games. That proved the making of the division and of Sky. By 2013, the Premier League's 20 clubs were raking in more than £2.5 billion a year, while Sky's accounts went from loss to profit in 12 months, racing from £63 million in 1993 to £10 billion by 2015. Dean and Dyke had changed the football landscape, making the sport officially a business and one of the world's biggest. So those were our top 10 unknown heroes who changed the modern game. And if you've got any suggestions, stick them down in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this, why not check out Stat Wars with Pat and Chris. And as always guys, don't forget to like and subscribe.